with us this morning in our midst is God's servant. Having served in very many of our stations, he was with us here at FHA at the time, left in 2021. He was also with us at Ekoma, transformed the state, transformed the city, transformed everywhere. Pastor Israel Akinsaya is with us this morning. And he is currently the what we call SMO. You may not know what it means, but let me tell you what it means. State Mission Overseer. Overseeing Kogi State. This morning, we'll be welcoming him to bless the mothers and to give the mothers commendations and recommendations. And from there, he will take the word and then release the blessing on the communion and release the blessing upon us. And at the end, you'll be established. Are you excited this morning? Pop up on your feet right now as we make welcome our father, Pastor Israel Akinsaya. Hallelujah. Someone that is excited to be in the sanctuary of the living God and not in the mortuary. I'd like for you to shout the loudest hallelujah. Mothers are jewels of inestimable value. No matter the side you want to view it, if there is no mother, the father is useless. <laughs> Fathers are donors, but mothers are. Okay, you understand. When father donates, mother receives, and therefore nine solid months, you are wondering why at the end of life, children, uh, they tend to feed towards their mother. Even when, okay, you, you, you understand what I mean? Uh, the father pays all the school fees, pays all the bills, but uh, when the children begin to bring something back home, uh, your father don't need much now. Just give him that little, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Am I talking the mind of fathers here? <laughs> very wonderful and special people imagine this world without women eh? <laughs> peace as in what urine or what <laughs> you said peace or what do you mean by your peace Imagine this world without women. Men in the house, shall we put our hands together for all the women? I like to say this, people of God, on a more serious note. The moral decadence that we are having today all over the world is as a result of the fact that some mothers are in a way taking the responsibility of men. 
I want to counsel this morning by the Spirit of God. I'm not saying women should not walk, but put an eye on the one that you brought to this world. Mothers are good disciplinarians. If they actually want to, they don't have time for nonsense. Is somebody hearing me now? Well, all mothers in the house, lift up your hands. Intend the mother. You are a woman. You don't need to, uh, hey, you are a potential mother. Let all every woman that, ha that is in the house lift up your right hand to heaven. In the name of Jesus the Christ, standing in the shoe of God's servant, the apostle over this great commission, Bishop Debiedeko, I declare you be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Whatsoever thing that the devil has put in motion to change your destiny, I command it to be scattered by thunder. I decree a new chapter of your life and your destiny now. I command that your life be enveloped with God's favor. Everywhere you turn, it shall be God's favor, God's blessing. In the name of Jesus, you will never suffer a setback. You will never break down in your life. All your secret tears, they are converted to laughter testimony. In the name of Jesus, the concern you have over your marriage, the God of heaven will bring peace in that home. The concern that you have over any of your children, God of them will arrest them and get them saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, none of you will be in the grave when the glory of your children has come. You will not be in the mortuary on the day of the glory of any of your children. You will not be in the grave in the day of the glory of your husband. You will be alive and well in the name of Jesus. You will see your children, children. You will not die before your time. The work of your hands are blessed. Your career is blessed. Your womb is blessed in the name of Jesus the Christ. This time next year, you shall be a thousand times many more better. In every department of your life. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Happy Mother's Day. Every good husband here. Good chi children to their mothers here. There must be something from you. Flowing to all the mothers. Did you understand it? No matter how small it is. It is the art that matters. Somebody, did you hear what I've just said? The Lord bless you. i like to bless the name of the Lord for the privilege to be here, even though it was not a plan, a pre-planned meeting. I called him at about, um, what time yesterday in the evening? <laughs> Around seven that I told him that I'll be here. And then, um, and thank you for giving me the express permission to be standing upon this exalted altar today to minister. I used to come here to teach in Bible school then, uh, especially when Pastor Sidney was here. Praise the living Jesus Christ. One thing is certain, you will not forget this service in a hurry. I want to appreciate all the leaders of the church, all our team of pastors. All members of the statutory body, the ordained worker, the elders, the deacon, the deaconesses, all units, every one of you, including you that you are standing for the good job. Every time I come around, I see new things. 
is an indication that you are truly following. And God of heaven will keep on changing your story. Even in the name of Jesus Christ. In a moment, just tell the Lord, Lord, here am I. One word in this covenant day of fruitfulness service. One word from you, you that sent a word into Jacob. And it lighted upon Israel. Send me my own word this morning. I need a word from you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Holy Spirit of the living God, none of me but all of you, let your word come with power to heal and to deliver. Sort out every issue of concern and let the name of Jesus Christ be glorified. One thing is certain, your heaven shall be open afresh. And you will encounter fearful blessing before the end, the end of this week. There shall be rain of fearful blessing over your life, over your business, over your career, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please put your hands together for the Lord as you have your seat in God's presence. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Very quickly, it is important to remind us that this month prophetically has been declared for us as serving God pays the most. And uh, we've been looking at a teaching series that is captioned Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. Part 2. We shall be looking at part 2B in this service, the resident pastor. Gave us a powerful message in the first service. If you are not there, please ensure you get the tape. I'd like for us to open our Bibles to the book of Sephaniah. Chapter 1, verse 15 to 18. We're going to read some chapters of the Bible before we really go into the message. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of cloud and thick darkness. A day of, trump, of the trumpet and alarm against the fence city and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men. Say God forbid. <laughs> because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Verse 18. He said there are Silver, neither shall their neither their silver nor gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the loss of money that money will fail. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of, of the fire of his jealousy, or for he shall make even a speedy radiance of all them that dwell in the land. Second Kings chapter six. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 24 beginning. 2 Kings chapter 6. And it came to pass after this that Benhada king of Syria gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for first crop pieces of silver. And the fourth part of a calf's doves, doves dung for five pieces of silver. The things that are not to be sold previously, they are now being sold. They are putting money on it. In those days, they would throw away the head of all this thing away. And who, who will go to the market that you want to eat? And it's the dove, it's the dung of the dove that you want to buy. 
It was a terrible moment in the land. Let's continue. You see what happened here. And as, a, and as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my Lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, where shall I help thee? Out of the barn flower or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, what ailed thee in the first instant? And she said, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today. And we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her, On the next day, Give thy son. And the woman hid her son and said, You are the most foolish woman on earth. I can't release my child for anything. I know what I suffer to carry the baby in my womb. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now somebody may be wondering, looking at the global picture, what is happening, you will know that <laughs> we are already sinking gradually towards what is happening here. All of the men that is taking over the world today has not happened at all. And yet, we have some young guys who are not ready to work, but ready to use human beings for ritual to make money. We have men who will use their wife. We have men who will use their children. We have women who will use their ch children. There was a post about a woman who told the son, they joined her to poison her daughter. And they because the native doctor told her that to make to have money, your son, for your son to have money, your daughter must be killed, and your son must make love to your dead daughter in your presence. And he did. Now, if you read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, you will see very carefully this negative prophetic verdict. It's a negative prophetic verdict, sir. That God was telling the children of Israel, if you disobey, if you refuse to serve me the way that you ought to serve me, sir, a day will come in your time that Women will begin to eat up their children. Men will begin to eat their children. Children only come from above, sir. To every divine location, there is divine allocation. If you miss your divine location, you have missed your, you have been disconnected from your divine allocation. There is frustration everywhere. Those in government are confused. Please. Don't be deceived by their propaganda. They don't have solution to this problem. Because even before they came in, sir, they, it was falsehood that brought them to power. Or don't you see fake bishop? The economic hardship, please hear this. I'm not a politician. You may not like my message. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But the truth has to be told, sir. Okay? Has anything changed since they came in? Just like Pastor said, government has failed. And they will still fail the more, sir. Because this is a negative prophetic agenda, sir. That must surely come to pass. In Malachi chapter 4 verse 1, it said, Malachi chapter 4 verse 1, look at it. For behold, the day coming. That shall burn as oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up. Say the Lord of hosts, that he shall leave them, neither what? Root nor branch up. But in verse 2, look at what they say concerning you. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness does what? Arise with what? 
healing in his wing, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. So there is always an exemption. No matter how negative the happenings around the globe today, sir, the covenant people has the right to covenant exemption. Is somebody hearing me now? Oh, you've got to have that understanding very well. The economy actually is biting harder day by day. And anger that is pre uh, precipitated by hunger is becoming more visible. Depression, high blood pressure of multitude is rising up daily. Because they can no longer afford the things that they used to afford very easily, sir. Let's not deceive ourselves. Things are not working the way it ought to work or the way it's been working. Is somebody hearing me now? Oh, yes. You won't take tribe or religion to the filling station and buy it for it. And say, okay, I'm a Christian. Buy me. Or I'm a Muslim, but I want to buy for it. You won't use church to pay landlord. Not at all, sir. Not at all. People of God, I'd like for you to wake up. Let your mentors, let your senses come alive. Let your five spiritual senses come alive, sir. Now hear this. The good news is that the darker it becomes, the better it is for the redeemed. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness, the darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And they look at the verse 3. He said, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and, the, and kings to the brightness. Now hear me, the category of people you attract is a function of the light of God that will be burning inside of you these days. It is the intensity of the light that is burning in you that determines the caliber of people, whether you are going to be attracting the subjects or you are going to be attracting the kings. Is somebody hearing me now? Something unusual is breaking forth in your very life. God's wisdom. After the order of Joseph, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is going to be our principal bailout in this downturn in the economy of nations. Sir. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get what? Understanding. The time for the emergence of the Joseph and the darkness of our days has finally come. You are going to be one of them. You may not look like it now, but you are imagined as the Joseph our, of our days. Ah, that's your amen, look. What is God's wisdom all about? Knowing the right way to go from the scripture and going there. Wisdom is profitable to direct in all things. Now the easiest way to enjoy exemption from the hardship that is created by an economic holocaust is to be guided, sir. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want Knowing the right way to go from the scripture and you are going there. Knowing the right things to do from the word of God and you are doing them. That's wisdom. Knowing the right step to take and right turns to make from the word of God and you are following. Follow me and I will make you. Your making is in the following, sir. Thank God for your uncle that are in government. A time will come that they, have, they will not be able to help themselves, not to talk of helping anybody. Is somebody hearing me now? And that is the time that God is going to be decorating the saints who truly understand what it means to be divinely guided. Is somebody hearing me now? Are you following? In our context, as individual members of the body of Christ, the wisdom of God is our bailout from all the mess. 
And what is that wisdom? Serving God. A time will come in this nation and globally that those who are not willing to serve God, they will cover their face in shame. Serving God is the antidote for the hardship that is going on in life today, sir. Is somebody hearing me now? It will interest you to know that the ultimate of your redemption and of my redemption is to serve God. When God liberated the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, the purpose was for what? To serve. He said, let my people go that they may serve me. Somebody may now be wondering, how does that one concern all in the New Testament? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 to 20 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and had given to us, what? The ministry of reconciliation. You are a minister. Say, I'm a minister. You may, your name may not come out in Tinumbu's cabinet, but your name is among the cabinet minister of heaven. The cabinet minister of this world can be removed from the news pages of the newspaper, but it cannot be so with you, sir, if you accept personal responsibility. He has given unto us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. And what is the tool that he has given unto us to reconcile the world back unto himself? The word of God. Let's look at verse 19. Is somebody following? To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of what? Reconciliation. Go ye. Because some of us were thinking that the ambition of Bishop Oedeko is too much. Everything, church grows, church grows, church grows, church grows, sir. Hear me. If church grows, sir, groaning will stop. Groaning will stop, sir. Verse 20. The final word there. He said to verse 20 now. Now then we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's name. Be you reconciled to God. You are what? Ambassador. Anywhere you find yourself as a student, you are an ambassador. You are married into an unbelieving family. You are the ambassador there, sir. You are working in the midst of people that are of the opposite religion, basically, you are the ambassador there, sir. Don't say, why me? The reason why it is you is because there is a glory package that is meant for you, sir. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, they were the only one in the land of, each, in the land of Babylon, sir. They were able to turn everything around, sir. Just four of them. Joseph was the only one in the land of Egypt, sir. Don't say why only I'm the only one there. The reason why you are the only one there is because by the time the blessing comes, no devil can be able to cover the glory of your shining. Is somebody hearing me now? Oh, it's very, very important, sir. So the more we commit to the interest of his kingdom on earth, the more of his wisdom he pours on us to become global solutions, sir. God is not a waster of resources. Wisdom is one of the spiritual resources that this end time need majorly to move forward, sir. Is somebody hearing me now? He can't waste his wisdom on you because he knows that you will not use his word as a student. He knows that you will not use his word as a lecturer, even though you come to church, but you prefer to sleep with small, small guests. He knows. If he gives you wisdom that can promote you to become the managing director, you will use it against the people you wish to oppress people. Because while you are just a clerical staff, you are hiding people's fire. And the main why, on the door of your office, I'm a winner. My year of distinction. 
heaven on earth, from glory to glory, all of the stickers are there. You know the reason why things are not really working? It's because we, have, we are here to accept the ministry that God has given unto us, which is superior to earthly ministry. Every redeemed child of God is a minister, sir. And you can't carry the things of God on your head. And when your issue comes, and God will say, I'm not there for you. Now hear this, people of God. It is the relevance now between an office assistant and a manager in an organization. If two, the two of them have similar challenge, health challenge, critical, who do you think the management will pay more attention to? Why? It's more relevant to the equation of the progress of the organization. Two of us. So, the question is, you have been praying over the years. Oh, God, change my story. How relevant are you in the equation of the advancement of his kingdom? You had that wonderful testimony that was shared here right now. He said, I've been running away from my unit. He said, but today they captured me. He said, you can see my uniform. Everybody go and join unit. He said, I will come for so many today. I will not come tomorrow. I will come. Now you see, people have died some mysterious death. Too. And then when you see them vibrating in the Holy Ghost with their title in church, and you are wondering, how can this good man of God die an untimely death? How can this woman of God die an untimely death? Is God unrighteous? No, sir. There are too many things we may not be able to understand about the death of people we call saints in the flesh until we cross to the other side. Then we understand better, sir. God still answers prayer, sir. God still rescues people from, this, from destruction, sir. The question is, can God trust you with a good position in government? Won't you join them? I, I've been saying over the years now, the problem of this nation is from the altar. When the altar is totally cleansed and do the right thing, sir, this nation will stand straight. Is somebody hearing me now? Oh, I'm telling you the truth, sir. The church is the problem of Nigeria, sir. Not in, no, nowhere, not Boko Haram, not banditry, sir. We are here to get it right, sir. We are chasing after the what you follow. We are, short, we are chasing after the shadows instead of pursuing after the substance. That has been the problem, sir. That has been the problem. When you call for prayer meeting, how many people come around? When you call for soul winning outreach, how many people come around? But when there is robbery somewhere, you want your pastor to come. When they rape somebody, you still want your pastor to come. But you will not be there, sir. The person that eventually raped you could have been somebody that you pass by and the Holy Spirit say, can you talk to this person about Jesus? He was not yet in his mess. He has not gone into drinking or smoking weeds and all the like. But all of a sudden, he met with some group and then they begin to operate and then they came to your house. That one will never be you. Oh, I said, that one will never be you. I said, that one will never be you, sir. The greatest wisdom ever, sir, is to align to the demands of what everyone wants. How many of you love that hymn that we sang? Trust and obey. That's the only duty that we have, sir. Trust him and obey. He said, we will do what he says we should do. And we will go to where he sent us to go. The ears of God are not deaf. His hands are not short. That he cannot deliver to you what you are looking for, sir. But because of your irrelevance in his equation on earth. That is why it's like you get a little today. Tomorrow, nothing is happening. And after some year, you get something again. Nothing is happening. Because you are an epileptic, unreliable person to his kingdom, sir. 
He that winneth so is wise. But he that refuses to, to win so is what? He's a fool. So if you are not winning so, you are what? Talk to me now. You are what? You are a fool. And when God calls you a fool, you should know that nobody can change it. If I'm the one that calls you a fool now, it's a different ball game. Eh? You can still walk away from But God says you are a fool. You are truly what? A fool. You are the only one who can change that name. You are the only one that can change that name. God knew, sir, that things will go the way it's going, sir. But you see, I have never been troubled or worried about tomorrow. If we see God asking. Why? Because the thing that I do forbids me to think or worry myself about it, sir. Is somebody hearing me now? It's not possible, sir. I sleep like a baby. My wife used to wonder and say, ah, have you started sleeping? I said, ah, what's my business? If I enter bus that I'm not the one driving, under five minutes I slept. My wife would be cheating. Ah, you are sleeping now. I said, ah, I pay. Should I be awake? I pay for the driver to be what? Awake. Hey, guys, it out. It's so simple as ABC. What of if accident is going to happen? I've already arrived before I enter. Is somebody hearing me now? I've arrived before I enter the car. I like for us to wake up, sir. All this prayer that we are going from one mountain, from one prophet to the other, that is not the way out, sir. Until you align yourself to do what God says, sir, you are not entitled to the blessing, sir. Matthew 6, 33 is still relevant till Jesus will come. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And how many of these things? A good husband, is he included? A good wife, is he included? That you now, you are as beautiful as you are. Good job, good car, living in a good house, and that you still need deliverance to be married. Something is wrong somewhere, sir. Because all of these things are what? Additions. They are what? Additions, sir. Additions. Let's look at briefly the platform for kingdom advancement, stewardship. Number one, passionate invitation of your contact to come to Christ. Early hours of this morning, I know that I'm not going to be in my station. My contact that I had before I travel, I send them messages. Early this morning, I called them yesterday, and I see send them around 6 a.m. Send them messages of remi reminder that don't forget tomorrow, and they responded. Is somebody hearing me now? I like for us to wake up, sir. In this kingdom, our God that we serve is not a Father Christmas, sir. He's a covenant Father. But now, there is no kingdom on earth that can be compared to the kingdom of God, sir. Is somebody hearing me now? This is a kingdom where the son of a nobody can become somebody without knowing anybody. At least if I don't know anybody that became somebody without knowing anybody, I know myself. I know what? Myself. I know where he picked me from. I know where he has brought me to. And I know the thing that he has shown me that I'm not even near 20% of his heart. Is somebody hearing me now? Oh, that's the truth. Passionate invitation of your contact, sir. Don't just talk to people on the road and abandon them, sir. You must be able to give them the invitation. Somebody said, today is my birthday. I mean, yesterday was his birthday. And then uh, somebody that he was expecting to come, and all of a sudden, the way she felt, she has already told, her, told the person that he must attend the birthday. And then the person now said, I'm going for a burial. You know how you will feel if the people that you are inviting for your occasion are not ready to come. But when you are passionate about it, sir, they come but what? Come. John chapter 1 verse 40 to 42. Jesus found Peter. Peter uh, found what? Found who? Andrew. And Andrew found who? The next? 
Peter. He found also Philip. And the Philip located Nathaniel. And he told Nathaniel, please, have, we have found the Messiah. He said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? I don't know what anybody must have said. Maybe they judge you by your background. They judge you by the result that you graduated with. Not, go, not minding what you went to before you even graduated at all. They judge you that this one, he can never, with talk class, with ordinary pass, he can never amount to anything. Leave them, they are not your God though. Something good can come out of your life. If you will release your life sacrificially to him, sir, he will turn you 360 degrees. That those who you to know you, they will be wondering whether it's you or not him. Is somebody hearing me now? Oh, I can't forget when I was doing my 50th birthday some years back. And then one of my friends that used to <laughs> say, I don't accept madness with Christ. You met us in Christianity. Because they told him, they said, I don't watch television again. I don't listen to news. It's just, it's a murder reading the Bible, studying Christian literature, or going out for evangelism. That is not, life is not as difficult as this. But when he came and he saw the caliber of people that flew from everywhere to attend that birthday. <laughs> this time he comes to my office, he will be shaking his head like this. But I know what was going on in his mind. Is somebody hearing me now? Because this is somebody they have written up that nothing good can ever come out of his life. But suddenly, something beyond ordinary coming out of his life. That is what God is going to do with your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must be there to serve. If you want to serve to the point that Jesus will recognize you. You must be what? There to serve, sir. You must be ready to live as an ambassador without compromise. As a student, as a lecturer, as a market man, market women, where whatsoever thing that you do, in the ministry where you are privileged to work, in the agency where you are privileged to work, sir, don't join them to share the loot of this country and expect that God will give you the backing to talk to people. It's not possible, sir. They know you. They know you. Don't allow present day gratification to make you to compromise your stand for Jesus, sir. What you are simply doing is that you are crucifying the Lord Jesus again. The truth is that you may not have gotten to where you desire to be, but you are no longer where you used to be. You may not have gotten all that you desire to have, but what you have now is more than what you used to have. Number two, Commitment to sending invitation to your converts and contact to all our services. To all our what? Services. I have an attitude as a pastor is by myself with my phone. Countless numbers of people. By the Saturday evening, I must send. When I was in Dubai, I must send to almost 1,000 people. Book SMS. By myself. Before they wake up in the morning, they will meet it again. It's a tradition, sir, that you need to cultivate so that things can work for you, sir. The things are not yet bad, though. Uh, it are, uh, no, it has not. It's not yet bad. Uh, no, we are just trying. The darkness has, it's just ordinary darkness that we are seeing. You know the Bible says, the darkness, not darkness, the darkness shall cover the earth. It's only ordinary darkness. The darkness has not come. Not to talk of gross darkness. You know what dark, gross darkness means? That is, it will be difficult to see. And that's what will move, you know, you see, Many of these people that goes into ritual, robbery, and do all manner of, of illicit something, sir. 
uh, you are just blaming them. If you know what they've been through, sir, before they could succumb to that pressure, sir. Uh -huh. But may you never go through such in your life. May you never. May you never, sir. May you never. Revelation 22, verse 17, the word of God says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come, let him that hear us say, Come, and let him that is at us, Come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The water of life is flowing from this altar. So all you need, keep on giving them compelling invitation to all our services. And there is no better, see, the thing that is happening in the world is more than, you know, it's just for you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, sir. The problem is too much. People want to hear you say, God bless you with confidence, with boldness, sir. You heard what pastor, 9 p.m. yesterday, he was CBC looking for, who will come with me to church today? And he went somewhere and he said, God bless you. And the guy said, responded, that's what I'm looking for. Be with me in church today. And the person was in the first service. Let's celebrate Jesus Christ. Problem is everywhere, sir. Marriage is not working. Food is not on the table. Those who used to have cars cannot afford to fuel their car again. They are trekking or going by keke. But you see, in this kingdom, there is always a way out, sir. If you read Malachi chapter 3, verse 15, to verse 18, you will see it very carefully, sir. And now we call the proud happy. They that walk wickedness are set off. Yea, they that thank God are even delivered. But look at verse 16. He said, then they that fear the Lord spake of one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance of them was written before him. That fear him. And that thought upon his, uh, upon his what? His name. And look at what he said. He said, and they shall be mine. Said the Lord of all, in that day when I make up my joys, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son, that does what? Even you that were a parent, you have children. One is very troublesome. It will always bring problems for you, but there is one. Before you say go, he has gone to do the work. But this one will never go. Which one will you meet their need first? The need first. The troublesome one. Uh -huh. And that nature, you took it from your father. God. He said, verse, verse 18 now. Let's look at that verse 18. Malachi 3.18. He said, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that served God and him that served him not. You see, we have what to use to judge. In the time of crisis like this, we are going to determine whether you are righteous or you are pretending in the church. Or whether you are serving God and you are not serving him at all. It is one thing to be going out, but it's another thing for your service to be acceptable to him. Because a service that is not acceptable is not rewardable. But hear me, before your service can be acceptable to God, your person must be acceptable to him first. No matter what you do in the house of God, if your person is not acceptable to God, your service can never be acceptable to him, sir. And until your service is acceptable, they are not rewardable. What are the qualifications? What qualifies me for a reward? What are the things that qualify me for a reward? In kingdom service, number one, last Sunday we look at we to serve him righteously, and the second one again. But today we're looking at we must serve him cheerfully. Cheerfully. You are not the only person that have not eaten. If you know people that have not eaten for some days, you'll be you'll be you'll be amazed. That because you have not eaten once now, you now came to church, your eyes is now looking like this. Angry with everybody. No. Be cheerful. Put Jesus' smile in everything that you do, sir. You are not to be pitied. You are to be celebrated, sir. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, he said, But this I say, he we swept, no, sorry. Uh, verse, uh, what is it called? Seven. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth who? A cheerful giver. In fact, there is a punishment for those who is not serving him cheerfully. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and 48. You will not be among that category of people. Number next, we must serve him willingly. Say willingly. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 8, verse 19. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If ye be willing and what? Obedient. You will eat the good of the land. Now hear me, I've pastor students more than any pastors in this ministry. I'm telling you the truth, sir. I've pastor students more than any pastor in this ministry. It's a place where no pastor like to go because they, they wrote off students that nothing good can come out of them, sir. But I can tell you, there's never been a place where I pastor students that they didn't prosper, sir. At the time, a time we come in their life, they don't go home for break. They don't go home for holiday. Their parents come to visit them in school. Is somebody hearing me now? And I've equally been what? Been blessed in the land, sir. Where nobody wants to go to, sir. I pastor in a Galway. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Everywhere I go today, I must meet them one way or the other. I passed out in Ekuma five years, six months. How many years? <laughs> Some students, I passed out them from year one to year end. They went for service, they still came back. To greet me. <laughs> is somebody hearing me now? Oh, that's the truth, sir. That's why I said in the verse of it, there is no land that is dry. We only have a dry heart. When your heart is fertile, sir, I tell you the truth, the land where you are must be definitely what? Fertile. Must be fertile. Must be fertile. Must be fertile. Is somebody hearing me now? I like for you to wake up there for sir. That there is nothing you do in this kingdom that is a waste, sir. He said, if ye be willing and obedient, he said, you will eat the good of the land, sir. No matter how bad the land is, sir, that is the good of that land. That is what? That is the good in that land, sir. Why are you always entitled to the bad? If ye be willing and obedient. Now hear this. Your obedience without willingness is fake. It will not be acceptable, sir. There must be of a, a willing heart before you take a step of what? Obedience. The life of obedience is a function of the willingness that is in your heart, sir. I can never be stranded, sir. Count me out, sir. I can not be stranded. <laughs> I will tell them in church and say, if every member of this church put their hand together that they will never be a blessing to me, I cannot be stranded, sir. I can't, because the covenant is too strong, sir. The wandering ravens, they are there. They will just wander from nowhere and then the blessing will just come like this. That's, that's, that's the truth. So, the problem is not because of the place where you came from or where you are. If you have been in America too, things will not, because a lizard in Nigeria, if he is given a visa to go to America, he can't turn to alligator. Yeah. Ah, ah, if not because of the kind of community that I came from, is it, where, which community did Bishop Oedipo came from? Which community the pastor here are they come from? Which community? The man who wore the first shoe in his life at the age of 21. 
you know, since we have been, in fact, you started wearing shoes from the womb. They have bought the shoes for you before you were given back to two of us. Returns of kingdom stewardship. Health and vitality. I told them in church last Sunday that this is not the time that anybody's else should fail you. This is not the period that anybody's else should fail. Because you are still struggling to feed. You know how much they are selling drugs now? Okay. It's not a time to appear before any doctor. That will now adjust his spectacle and go and say, from all medical analysis and diagnosis, I think you have monoclorapilacosiasis. <laughs> I cannot be sick. Not because Bishop Beyede possess so. Because I encountered the word of God and I'm doing what for be sickness and disease in my body. Check my BPT tomorrow. It's like that. Uh, we, we check it recently. Okay, myself and some pastor, they say uh, they want to check their BP. I don't check it. They forced me to check. I say, you can, what you will get, you will, you will be surprised. The, even the person checking it will scream. And that was exactly what happens. My BP is like a boy of 17, 18 year old. That's the way it is, sir. Right from the onset, sir. So where did you now carry your own high blood pressure from? You can't truly please God and your life will be ravaged by high blood pressure. And today, that demon of high blood pressure Haskalia Susa, Leruskede Lebrosia Taga, Haliaga, Yetuliaga Lugalosia Taga. I bind that demon by the Spirit of the Living God. And I cast him out of your life in the name of Jesus. I command your blood pressure to be regulated to normal right now. In the name of Jesus the Christ. He said, you will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. It is his responsibility to take what? Sickness away from you. He himself took your infirmity. If he took it then and you have it, you are a thief. You stole it. He himself took your infirmity and bore your sicknesses. And by his stripes, you were Heal, not that you are going to be healed, sir. If you are sick in your body, you are a thief. You stole it. A faithful ambassador is not planning to be healed. His health, Proverbs 13, 17. Number two, it secures generational breakthrough. Peter, Exchange is breakdown with the breakthrough anointing of Jesus Christ. He had a major setback. It's more than not for him if he's not sensitive. Like some market women, if you price their goods or talk to them in the day that they are expecting money and money has not come, they will insult your father, your mother, everybody. Can I make use of your boat? He said, why not? Of course, take it. This somebody that has an explanation to go and give to his wife and his mother-in-law at home. You go all out in the night, all through the night. How will you explain that it is not another ma woman's house you went? That not even crayfish, not even tilapia. Oh, you know women now? No, as a woman, tell me. How will your husband justify that he didn't go to another woman's house? That he went too late for fishing? What is he going to use to prove? Not even a bar, kilo de, 
crayfish are but no. The mother in law will say, I told you, when this boy was coming, I told you. <laughs> but thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus is more than enough. And as Jesus was preaching, the Bible said, go and preach the kingdom to all creature. Even the fishes, they came to hear. How can their maker be making speech and they will be far away? As they begin to hear the voice of Jesus, all the fishes that went away before, they started swimming very close to hear the word of life. And Jesus said, launch into the deep. And as he launched, if all of us are, all through the night we had nothing. Hear me. When you are guided by heaven and you apply yourself to that direction, sir, that is the greatest wisdom to bail you out. Peter had boat sinking, net breaking, or that of breakthrough. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. It secures, number three, the future in a grand style. Your tomorrow is eternally settled. The tomorrow of your children is covered. You are not afraid of anything. You are not afraid. You are not afraid. That's why when the earth will be burning like the orphan, sir, the word of God says that the son of righteousness will arise. With healing in his wings, sir. There is going to be an exemption for you. You are not worried about how your children are going to be. Some people carry high blood pressure because they don't know. They are already thinking. The children that is just teenager. They are already thinking of marriage for the children. What is your business? Pastor read Matthew 6, 34 for us. In every day, loaded inside of it is evil. If you don't know how to fill your day with the good that you desire, sir, evil will take over. Seek ye forth the kingdom of God. Well, today is our covenant day of fruitfulness. And it will interest you to know fruitfulness is one of the rewards of kingdom stewardship. Are you excited about that? You are not permitted to be barren, sir. You belong to a commission where barrenness has been frustrated. People without womb, conceiving. People without ovary and fallopian tube, yet conceiving. Zero sperm count, conceiving. Low sperm count, conceiving. So what is your problem? I like for you to know, people of God, that in this kingdom, barrenness is outlawed. Is what? Outlawed completely, sir. I've never seen someone who truly believes God in reality. That end up being barren for life. The devil may want to point your auntie to you. He may want to point one of your uncles that married somebody for 50 years and there was no issue. To you, but you see, you are not your auntie, you are not your uncle, you don't know what everybody is using behind, so you can't vouch for anybody, you can only vouch for yourself. Barrenness was not there from the beginning, sir. God specifically came in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. He said, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. That's not a suggestion, sir. That's not an advice. It's a military language. It's a command. And when God speaks, animate and inanimate object has no choice other than to hear and to comply. Be fruitful. God's servant, Bishop Oedeko said, children are either God's heritage or reward of service based on Psalm chapter 127. 
children are heritage of God. The fruit of the womb, there is what? Is reward. Is that correct? And so, it either comes to you as a gift or comes to you as a reward of your service. I tell you the truth. I serve God to the point of reward. Because somebody already told me many years ago that as a young boy, finish secondary school, that you will never be able to impregnate a woman in your life. And that word was ringing. You know what? It was a powerful no? Every time I remember fear, I can't tell anybody, but I was living with that fear until I gave my life to Christ. And when I got to winners, faith began to build up in me. But each time I remember that statement, occasionally fear will come. God knew my position. But on my wedding day, he came through for me. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife, and he went in unto her, and the Lord gave her conception. And God said to me that day, it is not what a man and a woman does that bring conception. It is I. If it were to be what a man and a woman are doing together that brings some conception, everybody should have children. Everybody should have it. Why is it that everybody are not having it? It is I. I am the one responsible for a mad woman that you don't know who impregnated her and is carrying about triplets on the road. That's what God is saying, sir. That's what God is saying, sir. And you are more precious, sir. That word entered me into like a thunderbolt, sir. Fear died a natural death. And I can tell you, with this scripture alone, root for thirteen, sir. We have had countless number of fruitfulness, similar impossible cases, sir. We have had fine boy, fine girl, boy and girl, triplets, quadruplets, sir. I'm telling you the truth, sir. If your faith can carry it, go to FHA and ask them. Is somebody hearing me now? We are not just saying it is what we have been able to touch. What we have been able to handle, sir. With our hand of the word of life. If the word of life enters into you in the area of fruitfulness, sir the word will become flesh. And the word became flesh. Rise up on your feet. 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 And the word became what? Flesh. And we beheld his glory, sir. Today, every issue of barrenness is dying from your life completely today. I'm glad to let you know Barrenness is not limited to the fruit of the womb. It's just part of it, sir. It's just one of it. Not all of it, sir. We have barren land, barren family. That you enter in the entire family. You just discover that all the women, they don't have children. All the men, they have problem in having children. Barren family. Burning business, burning career, burning education, burning here and there, burning hand. May you not shake hand with a burning hand person. May you never have a relationship with somebody that has been caused with barrenness. But today, the yoke of barrenness is going to be broken of your life. If you believe, let your amen be the loudest. Stretch forth your hands to this altar. Lord Jesus, lay your hand of blessing upon this hand. Lay your hand of blessing upon this hand. Lay your hand of blessing upon this hand. This hand becomes fruitful. It communicates blessing. It transmits blessing and fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus. Nothing is permitted to die in this land. You are not permitted to bury any of your children with this land. In the name 
name of Jesus. He said, destroy him not, because I have found blessing in him. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. I command the blessing of God to be domiciled in your life from today. That wherever you enter, the blessing of God will answer in that place. The favor of God will answer in that place. In the name of Jesus. Your career will go forward. Your business will expand and enlarge. Amen. You will enjoy supernatural breakthrough on every side. Amen. In your family, barrenness is over forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we put a final seal by taking the communion, you are here this morning, you are not born again. Hmm. It's a terrible, it's a fearful thing. For you to play with your destiny at such a critical moment in this country and globally. God wants to secure your life and your destiny. But it begins with salvation. You have been in the church long enough. You are hiding in the crowd but you know you are still living in sin. You need to rededicate your life back unto him. Two categories of people I want to pray for this morning before we partake of this communion. You are here this morning, you are not born again. You have never confessed Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. Jesus wants to change your story forever. Or you have been in the crowd, or you have been in a unicell, you are still living in sin. You need to rededicate your life because your sin will find you out very, very soon. All is bad and all is close. You want to surrender your life to Jesus, or you want to rededicate your life back unto him. Don't be ashamed of him wherever you are. Just place your right hand on your chest. You want Jesus to come into your life. Or you want to rededicate your life back unto him. Place your right hand on your chest. And say this word of prayer after me. Lord Jesus. Say after me. Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. Save me. And deliver me. From the power of sin. And that of the devil. To serve the living God. Today. I believe in my heart. And I confess in my mouth. That you are my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now I know I'm born again. I'm a child of God. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, can you just carry your bag and your Bibles? Everything that you came to church with, don't be ashamed. Move here very quickly. I want to pray for you. Come, 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 come. You pray that prayer with me. Don't be ashamed. Jesus is waiting for you. Run for your life. It's all about you, not about any other person. Walk out on the devil. Walk out on the devil. Don't allow the devil to cheat you any longer. Walk out on the devil. Walk out on the devil. Walk out on the devil right now. Jesus is calling you. Don't harden your heart. Jesus is calling you. Come from everywhere, from inside and from outside. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, minister to my heart now. There are six sisters. I don't know who you are. Hmm. If I count five, you don't come out. You know you are not born again. You are the one that the glory that will bring about a change in your family. It's resting upon your life. But you are still living one leg in, one leg out. If I count five, if you don't come out, if I pray for the one that are in front there, six ladies. That's what the Holy Ghost minister to me now. If I count it, you better come out now. I want to pray for this one. One. <laughs> Darkness will not cover your destiny. You better come now. One. Two. You run if you are coming. Three. Six of you. You know the battles. I don't want to explain certain things. You know the battle you used to fight in the night. You know yourself. Four. Uh 
and five. Those of you in front, lift up your right hand to heaven. Father, lift up your right hand in front, those of you. Thank you for the life of this precious one. Let your mighty hand rest upon them. Save them to the uttermost. In the name of Jesus, they cry. Bless them and let your name be glorified. Look at your back. Our pastors, our covenant partner, they want to pass information to you. Church, this is the mystery of the Holy Communion table. It's a table of divine exchange. Anyone that is appointed to die on timely death, on this table, you will carry longevity. No matter the negative medical verdict that you brought, after this communion, there shall be instant healing and deliverance for you. I can hear you believing, amen. amen. That general weakness of the organ of the body that is going to be an empowerment by this mystery of the Holy Communion, the organs will jack back to life. Amen. There is somebody here, you have issue with your brain. Yes, you forget things easily. And you are not old. But God wants to touch your brain today. That foul and unclean devil that is responsible for forgetfulness will be chased out of your mental system. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Father, thank you. Let the very life of Christ possess the medium of this table. Let the wafer be converted to the flesh of Jesus. Let the black current be converted to the blood of Jesus. By faith, the two of them is converted to the mystery of the Holy Communion. Whatsoever thing that has never allowed you to be one with Christ, after this mystery today, become one with Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, Express your heart desire as you partake of it in faith.